my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. At the end of the gospel, this is what we read. Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that they must leave for Galilee. They will see me there. My dear bro brothers and sisters, it is interesting to know that Jesus told his disciples to meet him at Galilee. Why did he ask them to meet him at Galilee? Why not in Jerusalem where he rose from the dead? He could have met them there. In fact, he met the apostles at the upper room eight days later. And then he went to Galilee to meet the rest of his brothers. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus did not choose to meet his disciples at Jerusalem, but in Galilee. It's simply because Galilee was the place in which he began his ministry, the place where it held fond memories for Jesus and the disciples because it was there that they met Jesus. It was there that they were called by Jesus. And therefore, Galilee brought them to the experiences they had with Jesus right from the very beginning of his ministry. And so to go back to Galilee to meet him is what the Lord Jesus is asking each one of us to do today. To go back to Galilee is to go back to your original experience of the risen Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, have you met the risen Christ? Have you seen him? Have you encountered him? Have you experienced him? If you recall, my dear brothers and sisters, that day when you were baptized, of course, most of you were babies, you were sleeping or crying. But at least you remembered that day when you received First Holy Communion, I'm sure on the day when you received First Holy Communion, when you encountered Jesus, it was a great day. Or the day when you were confirmed to be a witness of Jesus, it was an unmemorable experience. And for those who were adults when you were baptized, remember that day you look forward to. to your day of baptism, where you sacrifice so much just to get baptized, sometimes against the wishes of your family members, but you paid the price to become a Catholic. So to return to Galilee simply is to remember how you have encountered the Lord. But my dear brothers and sisters, are these memories still fresh in your mind? Are they still burning in your heart? That is the question. Or have some of you gone demented really and lost these memories? Ask yourself where you once stood and where you are today. What is the temperature of your spiritual life? Are you still burning with zeal? Burning with love? Or have you lost the passion for Jesus? We read in today's gospel how the women of Jerusalem, how they loved Jesus. They stood by him at the cross until death. And how early in the morning, on the first day, 
they went to the tomb to look for Jesus. How Mary Magdalene wept when she found that the body was missing and how she clung, clung to Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, how the apostles, when they heard the tomb was empty, they ran to look for Jesus. That kind of passion, that kind of love for Jesus, that was what drove them on, right from the start and to the end. My dear brothers and sisters, what is your love for Jesus today? Is it the same kind of love you have for your spouse, half dead, half alive? Still, still. Your relationship with Jesus is lukewarm, sometimes cold. You don't feel Jesus as anymore, just as you don't feel your spouse love. What has happened to that fire? When you began your job, you were so excited, you were so passionate, you were so grateful that God has given you this job, this career, this vocation. And now, are you still excited? Are you still passionate? Those of you who have been involved in church ministries, after baptism, you say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to serve Him. Are you serving Him still with that richness of love, that zeal? Or has it become a routine? It's become a duty. So the lector is still reading. If he's just reading, it's my duty, you know? The choir can sing, because it's my duty to sing. The community stays here. We just have to distribute the whole, so it's not very difficult. My dear brothers and sisters, what happens to that love? And if you say you have encountered the risen Lord, then again we are told the apostles, they went out. They cannot stop talking about Jesus because this encounter was such an awesome experience. They couldn't keep that experience to themselves. They wanted to announce to the whole world, even when they were persecuted, even when they were brought before the Sanhedrin, they were ever ready to declare Jesus as Lord. They were cowards in the upper room, but after the resurrection, no more. They were full of hope, full of courage. And I ask you, have you announced Jesus to people yet? Have you shared Jesus with anyone? Do you really believe that Jesus can make a difference in your life? Or has He made a difference in your life in the first place? If He has not, then I think you have not encountered the risen Lord. It's the religion that you are following. It is not the Lord. That is a dead faith that cannot save you. It only adds more burden to your life. As if you don't have enough burdens. You have plenty already. Faith in Jesus is not meant to keep you, enslave you, burden you, to set you free, to make you happy, make you more fulfilled in life. That is why if you have nothing to share to others, if you have no zeal, no excitement, to talk to others about Jesus, to give them Jesus, it means you have not found Him. He is not real. My dear brothers and sisters, you notice today the scripture readings, the liturgy precisely, helps us to recall that resurrection experience, which we all have really. You notice the whole liturgy and the scripture readings. The theme is light, darkness. The theme is freedom, slavery. The theme is death, 
life. These are the basic themes of the Eastern liturgy, dramatized by all these ceremonies. The scripture reading which we read from Exodus spoke of the Israelites being freed from the slavery of the Egyptians. That slavery reminds us of our own slavery. What is enslaving you, my dear brothers and sisters? Have you asked? What is it that you're not happy about? Why is your life so miserable? What is causing you to be enslaved? Who enslaved you? You enslave yourself. Nobody is enslaving you. Don't think that people can control you, my dear brothers and sisters. No one can control you. No one can enslave you. You can be a prisoner, locked in prison, locked in the cell. And yet you are the freest man on this earth. Freedom has nothing to do with physical freedom. It is the spiritual freedom. The freedom of the heart. The freedom to love. The freedom to determine your life. The freedom to remain tranquil, happy, joyful. What takes away your freedom is your sin. Bondages, bondage to pride, to anger, unforgiveness, hatred, jealousy, envy, greed, lust. These are the things that makes you unhappy. Really. Any one of you, if you tell me that your sins are making you happy, let me know. I want to find out. Anyone who lives in sin is a slave. That is the reason why today when we celebrate Easter, Jesus, we are told, has died to our sins. He has died to death. Death has no more power over him. And because of that, we know we are forgiven. If you have made the sacrament of reconciliation during this Holy Week, you will understand what I mean. That's why for those of you who have not celebrated the sacrament of reconciliation, you have not made your peace with God, you continue to bear guilt in your heart. That's why we can be celebrating Easter tonight. You are not set free. Because you continue to hold your guilt. You can't forgive yourself. You can't forgive others. You can't forgive God. That is why you are miserable. Only the person who can set himself free from sins. Then the reading from prophet Ezekiel tells us God wants to give new spirit, a new heart to the Israelites in exile. They were dry bones. My dear brothers and sisters, you know Jesus has come to give us new life. In the death of Jesus, we have come to realize this. That because this one man who has died for us all, as St. Paul says, it means to say, now we are called to die for others too. You know, some of you are always asking me such a simple question and you keep asking me, Father, how to be happy? Yeah? How to be happy? It's so simple. To be happy just to live for others, that's all. To give your life for others, to serve others. To care for others, to look after others, to love others. Happiness is yours. When you start living for others, when you start putting others as first in your life, because they are God's people, you'll be set free from yourself. Your misery is because you think too much about yourself. You're always thinking about my needs, my pleasures, my security. That's why you're not free. 
if you want to be free, live for a purpose. The purpose cannot be you. The purpose is to give life to others, transform lives, give hope to. That's why those people, when they live for others, they live with hope. Because there is a future. There is a future. There is a tomorrow. Those who live for themselves have no tomorrow. No future. So my dear brothers and sisters, indeed this evening we rejoice. You know, the exuded. I asked Monsignor Lau to sing. Huh? He did very well. Huh? He, worked, he worked very hard. You notice that in this exude, there is a very beautiful proclamation where we are told there are four nights. Four nights. What are these four nights? First night when you are delivered from slavery in Egypt. The second night when you eat the pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. The third night when Christians are set free from vices. And the fourth night we are told Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. These four nights give us hope that the ultimate victory is life over death, love over hatred. And that is the reason why, my dear brothers and sisters, St. Augustine reflected O oh, wonder of your humble care for us. O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. That is how great the love of God is. We are slaves, and to ransom a slave, God gave away his son. And St. Augustine exclaimed, O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, happy fault. Which means to say, without uh, the sin of Adam, the sin of Adam was great, caused all men to suffer. But without that sin, there would be no Redeemer. And St. Augustine said, O oh, blessed fault. My dear brothers and sisters, let me conclude. When we reflect on the death and resurrection of Christ, all our mistakes, all our past, all our faults, all our sins, now becomes moments of grace. He has transformed us from disgrace to grace. And He has made us a new creation. And that is what the first reading we read from the book of Genesis. We are restored to the full dignity of sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah.